Are you still driving for Uber or Lyft during the pandemic? Are you worried about disease transmission? Are you wondering if maybe a uh, shield between you and your passenger is going to protect you from COVID-19? Well, stick around after the break. I'm going to tell you all about different shields for rideshare. Hi, this is Gabe Hoken with the Rideshare Guy. And today I'm going to tell you all about driving with a rideshare shield in your car. Now, what is exactly a shield? Well, it can be any kind of clear uh, plastic or vinyl or whatever material barrier that's going to be in between you and your backseat passenger. I'm going to tell you about a few different kinds of barriers that I researched, um, a few different ones that I actually installed in this car and used to drive around passengers. And I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, how effective these shields are. In general, um, there isn't a lot of scientific research about the efficacy of these shields, right? We don't know how much they prevent disease. The problem when you're driving in a car is that air circulates, right? Warm air rises, cold air drops. And if somebody is breathing out these little tiny particles of COVID-19 uh, in, uh, in, uh, in water vapor, that's what comes out of your mouth when you breathe out, there's water vapor in your lungs. Um, the tiny, tiny, tiny droplets, they're gonna rise up and they're gonna go over shields and you're still gonna be exposed to them. That's why you still have to keep your windows down not all the way down, but just enough to keep air coming out of the out of the car, and also make sure that you don't use your recirc function on your vehicle's climate control system. Okay, there's two kinds of barriers that you can get. There are the uh, there's rigid plastic ones, right? And these are made of either usually either acrylic or a different material called polycarbonate, right? The polycarbonate is a little softer, but it is much much stronger. Acrylic can actually shatter like glass and actually make little sharp little shards. Both of these have their pluses and their advantages. Acrylic is going to be a lot cheaper. And um, there's a lot of, uh, there's several different uh, brands that you can go on Amazon or different websites. We tested a few different barriers from Driver Bubble. Um, they're different sizes, they're different shapes. You're going to basically be looking at two different kinds of rigid barrier right? You're going to be looking at one that's like a bigger one that's going to take up a lot of room, um, that's going to go down in the in the area in between the seats, um, uh, maybe even all the way to the floor and back. Uh, maybe it's going to be made of a kind of a semi-rigid material so that you can curve it and kind of shape it in your vehicle's interior, or maybe it's going to be more rigid and it just attaches to your sheet, to your back of your seats. Um, so the, the kind of full barrier uh, probably the nicest one that I looked at was the Lyft driver shield. And this is one that Lyft is going to make available at some point for drivers in their Lyft uh, driver store. You can get there through your app. Um, and this is going to be $50. I think it actually probably costs Lyft more than that to make these. Um, and they are really high quality. They're easy to assemble. They're adjustable for the width of your vehicle. And... Um, and they look really nice and they're made of polycarbonate. So they're um, very strong. And, uh, but of course the problem is, is that they're not gonna be custom fit to your vehicle. So there's still gonna be a gap, right? There's still gonna be a gap here for the little COVIDs to uh, crawl over the top. Other shields are gonna be uh, smaller ones. These are called sneeze guards. These are definitely gonna protect you from like bigger particles like you know when people if someone's a juicy talker and they're ugh, like spraying i know that that's happened to me um uh it's gonna it's gonna keep those particles from from reaching your mouth and your eyes and uh, and that's that's definitely a good thing so that's the thing with all these barriers they're all going to definitely reduce your chances of of getting this disease but they're not going to prevent it by any means um and that, that's kind of the rigid barriers. The rigid barriers also, they're, they're usually easier to install because all you gotta do is just zip tie them to your, to your headrests. Uh, that makes it really easy. Um, some of them are adjustable. Some of them, you can even have them, some of them might even be sized perfectly to your car. Okay, now I wanna talk about um, the uh, semi-rigid or soft barriers, right? And these are more just like a shower curtain. They're made of polyvinyl, and that's what shower curtains are made out of. So they're really soft, they're really flexible, but they can still be very, very clear. 
And the way these mount is you're going to use some kind of adhesive along your along your roof line and then use some way to, to stick them to the to the sides. Um, and when you do that, uh, that actually does create, I don't know if it's airtight, but it's pretty good. It's going to block 99% of those little of those little aerosol uh, bubbles that the that the virus is riding in, um, especially if the if the back windows are, are rolled down partway. Um, so I think these are the ones that are actually going to come closest to doing the job. Again, I'm not a scientist. I couldn't find any research on this subject exactly. So it's really a risk that you're taking. So uh, the nice thing about these flexible barriers is I think the cheapest ones are probably the most effective. And I saw these on Amazon for about $18. And in fact, you can go even cheaper. You can buy a huge roll of thick, like uh, five or 10 mil uh, polyvinyl film, because the thing about the soft vinyl barriers is that they're probably gonna come apart. I mean, they're probably gonna wear out or break pretty quickly. I would say you'd have to get a new one every, I don't know, every month or two is my guess. Passengers are gonna step on them. They're gonna get dirty. They're gonna start smelling weird. I don't know what's gonna happen to these things, but fortunately they're pretty cheap, 10, $20. For one of these um i've seen them on ebay as a as on ebay and amazon as a complete kit so they give you all the velcro tape the polyvinyl sheets are cut to a reasonable size that's going to fit 99 percent of the vehicles that are used for uber and lyft and then you can just take a pair of scissors and then just trim them so that they fit perfectly and what you want is some overlap you want them to fit inside the back of the doors so that the doors actually close on them make a nice tight seal and then up here on the roof line um, you're going to get Velcro to stick to the to the polyvinyl, um, but that's going to probably fall off because you're sticking adhesive to the cloth roof liner. Uh, a really great solution is they give you a bunch of just little stick pins, you know, like your grandma used when she was sewing. And you just stick those uh, through the vinyl and through the roof and um, they'll probably you put enough of those in there. They could probably not rip even if someone is stepping on your on your. Uh, on your curtain there. So it's pretty good. And then in terms of what it's like to drive with one of these, I found the experience pretty good, depending yeah, so that, on, what, so the, sure uh, on what the material was. The more rigid barriers are the nicest to drive with because they just sit there real, real firm, real steady. Um, you can hear the passengers in the back seat um, some of the nicer higher end ones have like a little door in between the seats so that uh, passengers can pass you a uh, cash tip. Yeah. And um, because that happens, right? Uh, once every 10,000 rides, right? So you want to know what's the best barrier to buy? Which one should I get? Well, like everything else I ever review, it's going to depend totally on your needs. And what I want to do is educate you about the kinds of materials. So like I said earlier, if you want something that's going to like kind of give your passengers a little more confidence that you're taking your job seriously and you're concerned about their safety, but you're not really that concerned with disease transmission, I would go with a rigid barrier. If you're really concerned about disease transmission, I would go with uh, the polyvinyl film, uh, the clear shower curtain stuff, and uh, and make sure that there's a tight seal between you and your passenger. And both, and you and your passenger are gonna feel a lot safer. Like you're really taking this seriously and you're really concerned about uh, about disease transmission. And they'll probably tip you big time because our passengers are so uh, appreciative of our services, right? Anyway, um, if you have more questions or want more ideas about what to look at, please go check out the article that is on the Rideshare Guy. Uh, there's links to Amazon to some of the products that I tried out. So you can check that out. Also, please uh, like and subscribe to my videos, to all our videos on the Rideshare Guy. And uh, please don't drive yourself crazy and be safe out there.